Hey fellow gamers, it's Cozy Mel and I'm here with a Paleo video for you. I think there's quite a few people steaming into Paleo this week. When you first start your game, you fellow steamers, you're going to need some treasure. <laughs> Just everyday items, but you will need them. So we're going to go on a little uh, treasure chest hunt. This is Byron Lance. He's going with us. Yay! And the first one is behind the waterfall over here close to where you were born. This is the map. This is Phoenix Falls. You hit M on the keyboard to make your map come up. You were born in Phoenix Falls and your house is right here. So this is where we left from and we walked up here. There are two sets of waterfalls up here and there's also a fishing pond. I think if I remember correctly, it is behind this first one. You might think you can't get back here, but you can, even though you don't have a glider yet. So we're going to show you both the treasure you can get by yourself and the treasure you will have to get after you get a glider. But here's a treasure chest. Are you excited? It's your first one. It has five gold, three leather, and you get to keep the treasure. I want to tell you right now, those three pieces of leather are worth your life in this game. And I'm not joking. They are gold. They are better than gold right now. You need that leather. Please don't sell it. Don't spend it. Don't use it <laughs> to make furniture. You need that leather. That leather is all important or you will never get your glider. <laughs> so just... Hang on to it. That's the best piece of advice I can give you this early in the game. Now, we are at the fishing pond I showed you on the map, but I'll show you again. This is the fishing pond, and this is the landing area in the middle of the pond. And we can't get there as a new player that does not have a glider. So, see, I can jump, and I can try to get there, but I can't make it. And it'll put me right back up here. You won't die. There's no dying in this game. You're not going to die. You're not going to fall down dead in the middle of a field at one o'clock in the morning because you didn't eat any food or you're out past your bedtime either, Stardew Valley. You can play as much as you want, but you need a glider to get this chest. So Byron is going to go get this chest on his glider. Easy as that. He jumped. He pressed his space bar. His glider popped out and he flew over there. And he can get the chest that we can't get. So just, uh, you can see the chest. He can't <laughs> because he already got it. So he's finished with his work for this portion of the video. Now we're at the Dayu farm. So we are at the farm on the map. It is right here. You can see us on the map. And this is called Leafhopper Hills. This is where the farm is. Straight to the east of the farm is Killama Village. So if you're in Killama Village, you can come straight west and you will end up here at this farm, at this barn area, right here where the cows are. They're called Ormus, but they're basically cows. You can turn and go into this little shed and there is your chest. You get 26 gold, eight sneaky smoke bombs and one treasure chest to keep for your house. So, fantastic. We are getting some gold, and that is important. All right, we're going to go to the other side of the farm. I'm going to show you on the map. We're on the other side of the farm now. So, you saw us over here, and we got the chest that was in here. Now, we're at one that you cannot get unless you have a glider. So, once again, we're going to have to ask Byron for some help on this one. Um, this is one where you will walk out to the edge and then you're going to jump, hit your space bar for the glider, and then you're going to grab those vines with all your might and climb up those vines. And you can see the chest out there at the end of the pier past the broken point. I'm sure Byron can't see the chest because he's already picked it up, but we're going to watch him jump and fly and climb. These are good things to learn because you will be climbing a lot of vines. 
So he jumped, he flew, he grabbed the vines, he climbed up them, and he's standing right where the treasure chest is. Okay, you get cooking oil, wheat, and 49 more gold. However, until you have a glider, you can't get over there. So we will have to move on to the next one that hopefully you can get. But if things work out well and you save those three leather, <laughs> I have another video that'll show you how to get your glider the fastest way that you can get it. All right. All right, on the map, here we are at the very top of a really tall hill. So we were over at the farm at Leaftopper Hills, and then we went and went down to Gillyfin, and we watched Byron get that chest. And now we are over here at the, near the old docks. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the tippy top of this hill, and then we're going to get this one, and then we'll go get the one at the docks that are just right down here in this circle. So I'm circling where we are. I'm circling where we're going to go next. And we're going to get these two chests. It's really going to help you to get going in the game. It's nice to have this stuff up front. Okay. We got Surnuk Hide, Choppa Meat, and the chest and 11 gold. So 11 more gold, that's fantastic. We also got choppa meat, which we will be eating at some point when we get a recipe. But in the beginning, I sell it because you need money. And we actually got some hide as well. And we are going to save it if we can, because that's what you make leather from. But it'll be a long time before we get a loom. So, okay, Byron's going to glide down off of the tippy top of here. So you'll see how you can glide down onto the old docks. I'm going to jump and show you that you can't die. See, I just did a nice little roll and everything's okay, folks. I'm fine. I didn't break a single bone jumping off that cliff. I love this game. <laughs> so anyway, you can just jump off the cliff and run over here and look how tricky that is. The Devs put a trunk on a hook at the end of a dock. But you can push your F or your interact key and you will get it and get 25 gold, five fishing worms, and the pirate chest to put on display at your house. Yeah. This bridge takes you into Kilima Village. And this bridge, I'll show you on the map, is right here in front of us. So I'm circling this bridge, and this is Kelima Village. And if I zoom out on the map, you can see uh, the house that you have to live in, or your tent, is right here. And you are right here on the map. Once you've been doing this for a while, it seems really easy. And so sometimes I'm forgetful about how difficult this can be for the newbies that are steaming into Palea. Okay, so here's your treasure chest. Well, go ahead and loot it. You get 20 repair kits, four copper ore, and your pirate chest, and 10 gold. So, I mean, we are getting some gold. Let's take a peek. 77 gold and we had zero gold just a few minutes ago. So if you spend the first 10 minutes of your playtime in Palea just doing these chests, you're going to get about 100 gold. It's really a good thing to do. Okay, that's Byron running up the steps from Kilima. You turn around when you get up here and look and this is the mayor's house. We want to go in his backyard. So we have to go through his house to get to the backyard. Don't worry. They won't stop you. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Sometimes they're even home and they don't even care. You come walking through their house. But we're going to go all the way back here to the gazebo. This one I don't think is a particularly uh, wonderful trunk to get, but we'll get it anyway. One sundrop lily, two crystal lake lotuses, and a treasure chest. Okay, so we are leaving the mayor's yep. estate. That's right here on the map. And right here is Kilima, and out here is the farm where we started out earlier. We just finished here at the mayor's gazebo. 
And now we're going to go down toward the Fisherman's Lagoon down here. And this is where ENR hangs out. And he's a big, tall robot. And he is your fishing instructor. So we're going to head in that direction. Okay. So here on the map, we are at Fisherman's Lagoon. This is ENR. Once you meet him, he will have a face. We passed him right up and went over here to the east side of the lagoon. And there is an actual um, little tiny dock over here, just a little tiny fishing dock. And it is underneath this little fishing dock. And I will show you that in just a second. But this is where we are on the map. And I can go ahead and zoom out so you can see Kilima Village. And then we are south and east. And it is over here on the east side. Okay, here is the little dock. And you can just kind of sneak under here and push your interact button. You will pull it up and you get four flour, two cooking oil, and a pirate chest, and ten more gold. This piece of human uh, ruin, broken down building in front of me that's shaped like a cross, tall, it's got a right arm and a left arm. As I'm facing it, my right, my right arm. So that arm to the right sticking out of that cross has a little chest on it. If you climb straight up this cliff, there are a couple spots. There he goes. There he goes. Is he going to make it? Is he going to make it? He made it. Okay. So that wave to us. Can you wave to us, Byron? Okay, see him up there waving? That's where the chest is, and that's where you have to get to. Okay? Oh, that's awesome. He says he got two potatoes, onions, and five gold. Um, and those seeds are going to come in very, very handy. <laughs> so here's where we were a minute ago, Fisherman's Lagoon. Okay, so we are just straight north and a little bit east of Fisherman's Lagoon. Okay, here we are in the very corner of the map. So this area is called the Whispering Banks, and this is a good place to go hunting. There's a gazebo at the end of this road. So if you are in Kilima in town, you're going to come straight east, straight south, and this little C on the map is a gazebo, and there's a treasure chest in there. So let's go see what we get. 31 gold, 18 sapwood planks, and the treasure chest. 31 gold, kids. You can do all of these in the first 15 or 20 minutes of play. As soon as you start up and get out in the world, do this first. Then go do your quests, okay? I'll show you on the map. We are down here in the southeast corner. We were right here at the gazebo, if you remember. We were over here at Fisherman's Lagoon. Now we're halfway in between the lagoon and the gazebo. So we are right here. There are two bridges, and this is the second bridge, and it's underneath here in the middle of the water. There it is. It's hidden. You really can hardly see this one. It's right in the middle of the water and the water is streaming over it. Let's see if we can open it. Two emerald carpet moss, one copper bar. It takes five copper to make a copper bar. And you also have to have a kiln that you will learn from Hodari, but not your first day probably. But maybe, I mean, but it, it you know, it takes a minute. So having a copper bar right away from the very beginning, that's fantastic. And some gold and the chest that you could take to your house. So now we can look again at our UI and look at that, kids. We did 168 gold. And last but not least, I hesitate to even show you this chest because I know you're going to come down here and try to jump to it, but... Better platformers than me have all tried a million times, and you cannot jump to this platform <laughs> to get out to this chest without your glider. And even with your glider, it's dicey. But anyway, I can show you on the map where we are. 
We're all the way down at the lake, and we are just a little bit west of Fisherman's Lagoon. So if you're in Kilima, you can come straight south. And right here where this little bridge is, is where we are standing. And when you look out, you will see that shiny treasure chest right there on that rock. And you're going to want it so bad, but you can't get it until you get your glider. Sorry, folks. I hate to end on one that you can't get to without your glider, but that's, that's the last one. Okay. And we will um, have a whole series of videos for you on being a beginner in Palea. So please steam through those before you play if you want to. And that way you can uh, know what you're doing at all times and, and not waste a lot of time. If you don't mind a few spoilers, go ahead and check out our videos for beginners. And please like and subscribe and ring that bell so you can see everything that we uh, drop on videos. And I have 130 Paleo videos out there, so I'm sure there's some you'll want to watch. And I will see you in the next one.